Jesus is King. Welcome back to the Lay Apostle at Immunif Catholic. Today's show, we have a very important and special show for you today. And it has everything to do with the heart of our apostolate, which is a lay apostolate supported by a guild. This is a very important institution of Christendom that needs to be recovered, is the guild. Guilds were born out of a confraternity of prayer and reparation that lay people spontaneously did and created and out of this confraternity was born material help this is how guilds are often associated with catholic social teaching but in fact it's a it's first a spiritual bond between catholic brethren that was formed by mutual prayer and sacrifices and celebrating liturgical feasts and after that happened Members of the confraternity had material needs and, you know, there were widows or orphans and things like that. And out of this mutual prayer was born the mutual assistance of temporal needs and economic uh, cooperation and things like that. So that's what we're trying to build here at Meaning of Catholic in our little way that we can, which is our guild community, which is our international community against the Marxists, where Catholics can help each other. Uh, first, by binding ourselves to the mission of the meaning of Catholic, which is to pray and sacrifice for priests and seminarians, to encourage one another in the faith, to pass down the faith to each other, uh, and especially to our children, and to form these bonds that the Internet allows us to have, which are bonds which we've always had through the mystical body of Christ in our community in the Eucharist across every geography of the world and including space and time. But the Internet allows us to make these connections with our brethren throughout the world. And so this is a critical piece of our apostolate. So today we're going to talk about talk to one of our uh, brothers in Christ who is a part of our guild. His name's Leo. And we're going to get to know him. And we're going to appeal to you for material assistance for him because he's fallen on hard times. And as St. Paul says, if we do not take care of the household the household of the faith, if we do not take care of the poor who are among us in our own church, then we are worse than a heathen, he says. We are worse than a heathen. So as my spiritual father told me, orthodoxy is not enough. Orthodoxy is not enough. And the obviously the gospel, sheep and goats, we can go to hell if we fail to support the poor according to what we can whatever we can. So I'm asking you to chip in to help our brother Leo and his family. We're going to get to know him right here, right now. So Leo, it's great. Hello. I'm glad, glad we can uh, get to know each other a little bit more. Leo, where, where, where do you live? I live in central Florida, central Florida. Did you, yeah. guys, did you guys get hit by the hurricane? We did. Um, we sheltered in my sister-in-law's grandmother's house. It's a block house. So uh, we weathered it pretty well, but we weren't, we weren't in our trailer for the hurricane, but th thanks be to God, there was very minimal damage. Oh, thank God. Yeah. But I, so I know that you, so you, you initially struck a lot of hard times last year uh, with your house. Uh, but take us first, just tell us a little bit about yourself, Leo. Did you grow up in Florida? Are you a cradle Catholic? Uh, tell us about your family. Uh, anything to get to know you a little bit more. Okay. I was, uh, I was born in California, but we moved here to Florida when I was uh, still a baby. Um, we lived in a couple of houses, and then we finally moved into the one that we lived in for a very long time when I was five years old. And uh, I grew up in that house. Now, my the house we were living in was a block house, and we lived there for about 39 years. And I only moved out once for like a year, and my parents wanted me to move back in. Um, my dad was a mechanic. <clears throat> My mom uh, did a did various jobs, and uh, we grew up kind of lower middle class. I started having 
uh, problems with uh, anxiety and depression and obsessive compulsive disorder when I was a late teen. And it didn't help that I uh, uh, had fallen in with people who smoked a lot of marijuana. And I ended up doing it too, and that kind of opened the floodgates on my problems. Um, in order to try and get some... We did not grow up religious at all. We, My dad's family was vaguely Protestant. My mom had grown up Mormon, and uh, she was not practicing uh, by the time she met my dad. And so we had the King James Version of the Bible and several copies of the Book of Mormon around the house. That was all that I knew. And so when I started having problems, I didn't know anything about psychology or religion or philosophy. I thought that joining the Mormon church would help my problems, and it did the exact opposite. It made it a lot worse, especially with their their doctrines. They were... Not only are their doctrines religiously wrong, but they're very philosophically wrong as well. So you, um, you became a Mormon at what age after this is? Oh, this is about, I was 19 or 20, I think. Okay. And uh, it uh, the philosophical problems with their doctrines really threw me for a loop. And I had never heard of Aristotle, Plato. And I had had questions about these things that they and, of course, Christianity in general, but Catholicism in particular, had already addressed centuries ago. So these things exacerbated my own mental problems and put me in a very, very bad state. I was bedridden for a month or two. And it was only because I was living at home that I was even able to pull through. Basically, fast forward a bit, I ended up as non-practicing for a few years, and uh, I ended up dabbling in paganism for about a year. And uh, I was eventually... I don't know, kind of scared out of that and ended up looking at, at Christianity in general. And I was able to get some help to where I would be able to examine these things without having a panic attack. Because for the longest time, I wasn't able to even think about religion without, you know, falling apart. But so, so Leo, sorry to interrupt you. I just just mm -hmm. want to learn more about you. Um, so the, you're saying the philosophical issues of Mormonism exacerbated just existing mental issues that you have been having. Yes. Um, and then when you said paganism, are you saying like like a cultic kind of thing, Wicca, or like what exactly do you mean by paganism? Yeah, yeah, kind of a, a Wicca adjacent or or dabbling in in Wicca. Okay. I didn't get too far into it, but I, I ended up getting scared out of it. And I was able to actually examine religions for the first time in a more objective manner. Long story short, I looked through a few. I ended up as a Lutheran. Um, I was a uh, Missouri Synod Lutheran for about eight or nine years. Okay, so so this so, so viewers understand Missouri Synod is like the hardcore Lutherans who are really they're like the old school Martin Luther Lutherans who are following the the doctrines of Luther actually, um, I, and yeah. Missouri Synods will not actually give communion to other Lutherans who are not Missouri Synod. Well, the Missouri Synod is basically the largest confessional Lutheran body in the united states by confessional i mean they hold to the book of concord in a dedicated manner um the larger lutheran church bodies which all eventually amalgamated and became the elca they will say that they held to the book of concord in a qua manner that is insofar as it aligns with the bible 
the Missouri Synod Lutherans and those even more conservative than they will hold to what they call a quia. I may be getting them reversed. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know Latin, but they hold to the book of Concord because it comports with scripture. That's, that's their yeah. stance. Uh, Missouri Synod Lutherans. There's also a smaller body called the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. And in fellowship with them is the Evangelical Lutheran Synod, which I also spent a little bit of time in. Um, I am very much online most of the time. I work at home and I work on my computer. And so I'm, I'm very much... Uh, all the discussions that are going on about religion, I, I'm... Uh, you know, very much into those. And I, I ended up looking at Catholicism and long story short, I became a Catholic through the uh, ordinariate. So what, that's interesting. So what was, um, two questions for you, Leo. First yeah. of all, what was the effect of becoming a Trinitarian Christian in the form of the Missouri Synod Lutherans? And number two, since those Lutherans are, you know, so hardcore about being Protestant, much more than many, most vast majority of Protestants today are just kind of non-denominational evangelical, mm -hmm. don't even have creeds sort of thing. Uh, what was it that made you look at something other than that after eight or nine years? Well, the effect of becoming a Trinitarian Christian was, you got to realize that in Mormonism, they're gods because they believe in multiple gods. Yeah their gods are basically evolved men. They're basically men and gods are the same species to them. It's the same thing, just at different stages of, of development or, or, or they believe that by following Mormonism, their God will elevate you to the same level of Godhood. I mean, he's, they believe that he's still the supreme over all of the Mormon gods, but you become the same thing as him, literally, very literally. Uh, becoming a Trinitarian Christian, I was able to, I was able to have a God, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I was able to see God for what he was and see myself for what I was, which was a creation entirely contingent. Um, somebody in his care, it, it, if you know what I mean. Um, the Missouri Synod Lutherans, at least on paper, have a very strong identity. They, have, they, they know who they are and what they believe and why they believe it. Um, in practice, <clears throat> um, they, like all Protestant denominations, are shrinking and a lot of them have turned to the style of the evangelicals for their for their practice and there's a big pushback against that of course in the Missouri Synod and other smaller confessional lutheran church bodies and some of them at the at the time that I was in that church body some of them had started to examine Eastern Orthodoxy. And s s some pastors became Eastern Orthodox. And there was a huge debate about it at this time. And I examined both sides of the issue. And at, at that time, I kind of lost my faith in sola scriptura and sola fide. I had examine the church fathers in more depth than what your average Lutheran does. I examine the history of the church. I examine the claims of the Eastern Orthodox and I was seriously considering it. And I, I've always been a huge Tolkien fan, even since I was a kid and I knew Tolkien was Catholic. So I decided to examine Catholicism too and found that, I believe the claims of the Catholic Church uh, more than the claims of the Eastern Orthodox. And uh, I went through about four years of discernment on, on this. 
And uh, long story short, ended up joining the church through the ordinary. And I joined a Anglican parish that was on its way into the ordinary, which is my home parish in Orlando. Oh, that's great. Is it, um, I, doesn't Eric Ibarra, my friend Eric yes. Ibarra. Yeah, he's a fellow parishioner. I know oh, Eric. he's not the same. <laughs> yeah, Eric's well, a friend. Oh, that, that's great. I'm so glad. You, yeah, Eric, he's one of my oldest internet friends, if you will. We've met in person yeah. several times, but a uh, great guy. He's a good friend of mine, too. Uh, glad that you can have him as a friend as well. Um, and that's interesting because the Lutheran, there was originally when the ordinary it was first set up, there was some some kind of conservative Lutheran denomination that also came in as well with <coughs> those Anglicans. I don't know which... Well, Lutheran that was what actually happened was there the church of in, in the church of england in the ordinary in england almost all of the people in the ordinary in england came from the church of england there the continuing movement did not take off in england at all in the united states the parish that i joined was part of the continuing movement and the we were part of the anglican church of america um, that body still continues. The, the the bishops of the Anglican Church of America all agreed to join the ordinary, but not all of them did. Our bishop did. The bishop of the Southeast, uh, Bishop Louis Campisi, he, he's he's still a parishioner at, at my parish. God bless him. He's a lovely man. But um, the body that you're talking about was one of those Episcopi Vigante, I think, kind of groups they had a bishop or two they had like 10 or 15 priests and they had like 10 or 15 parishioners hmm. okay yeah and, very tiny little spider. yeah okay and they ended up i think either dissolving or continuing i'm not sure but they're still a very small group but they they were kind of part lutheran part anglican if that makes hmm. any sense okay. yeah interesting um now, I, let me ask you one more religious question, and then I'd mm -hmm. like to tell uh, tell us more about what's been going on lately that um, caused you to fall on hard times. Um, not many people take four years to examine Eastern Orthodoxy. And so can you summarize briefly, <laughs> the, if you can, four years, what was it that ultimately made you believe the claims of Rome over those of the Eastern Orthodox apologetics? Well. It was a matter of, how do I say this? Oh, what's the phrase? It's a legal phrase. It's the, the preponderance of evidence, basically. Yeah. Okay. If you talk to Eric, he will tell you that both sides have a great case, but that the Catholics have a better case. And that's basically the conclusion that I came to. I... the preponderance of evidence pointed me to the Bishop of Rome being the center of unity and the earthly head of the church as the vicar of Christ. Now, there are so many other, there are so many other issues to consider. One is that the East Eastern Orthodox are exclusively Byzantine the catholic church even though the eastern catholics are a very small portion of it and even though i am very western and, and i i'm i'm not really eastern leaning which is part of the reason i became catholic is that the eastern catholics are there and even if their practice or or their their fullness can be somewhat attenuated you know within the Catholic Church due to circumstances of, of history and circumstances of size and such, they're still there, and they act as right. a bit of a counterbalance on the excesses of the West, or at least they should. Now, it took me four years because I'm very risk-averse, and I also have OCD, which kind of makes me go over things a lot and i went over things a lot before i ended up convinced um i couldn't tell you the particulars these days because i don't have a great memory but 
it, it took me a lot of study, a lot of examining sources, and also comparing the current state of the church, which then under Benedict was looking very bright. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If if this had happened under the current pontificate, I may not have had your fortitude, and uh, I I may have stuck where I was. But I, I guess it happened at the right time. So. Yeah, I understand. So, well, thanks for sharing, Leo. I really appreciate all this backstory of your religious journey. Um, mm-hmm. So, take us back to uh, did the uh, hard times according to your, your the um the gofundme you start by talking about what happened to your house last year um where do you want to start with just the most recent difficulties y'all have been having okay well my dad passed away in 2010 hmm. um my sister and brother were living at home with me and my mom at the time uh, my sister with several kids um my brother has substance abuse it, and other issues he ended up having to leave and go to alabama this is pertinent i have <clears throat> i've always struggled with work because of my problems before i was working at home uh, my dad had a had a mechanic shop that i was basically the office person for and the only reason i never got fired is because i worked for my dad and after that closed down we sold it i've gone between various jobs trying to you know establish myself full-time get into the routine and and everything and i would always mess things up somehow long story short by the beginning of the uh right around the time that benedict resigned i started working at home first at a call center job, which basically you answer phones at home for, you know, whatever faceless corporation. Yeah. And th- then I ended up in a job where um, I was what they call a search engine evaluator. Uh, and I was in that for about 10, 11 years. And then that program ended and I ended up in another similar job. Now these jobs are, um, they're they're contract jobs the pay is low but it's okay and in some of them you have to pay your own taxes and it's basically all that i'm able to do consistently um i I can't go into the specifics of the job because there's a lot of nda agreements and things like that um but long story short me and my mom are living alone in 2022 my brother who has been in alabama and homeless most of the time wants to come back and uh you know get himself grounded established for a year or so which my mom says okay he comes back down and then basically the next day there's an electrical fire in my mom's room, which is the, the basically the in-law suite in the back of the house. My mom yells fire. We go outside, call 911. I try to get a fire extinguisher for my neighbors. They're not, they didn't answer the door and we have to watch our house burn down. The firefighters tell us it was an electrical fire. And uh, we end up in a hotel. My brother comes back and we're in that hotel for like three months and my mom sells the 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 property she the basic y'all did not have insurance we did not have insurance the insurance company wanted all of it up front at the beginning of the year we couldn't afford that so all this time we'd spent shopping around for insurance couldn't find any not not that we could afford because most of them want the money up front And my mom is still paying on the mortgage. She has basically half a year to go before we own everything. Oh, man. Yeah. So we lost everything. I was able to save like a laptop and a couple pairs of pants and a couple shirts. So thankfully, we we had a GoFundMe at that time and people did help us. But we were able to 
sell the land the house was on. Somebody, a realtor saw our situation, bought the land for a, a decent amount, not not a lot, but enough to help us out. We bought the trailer that we're currently living in. It's in a 45 plus community. We have to pay a lot rent. At this time, my mom's working, I'm working. My brother is working sometimes. He's still having his problems, him and his his wife. His wife doesn't have these problems, but she's dealing with him having these problems. Um, my mom, my mom's job, she's a parts delivery driver. She works at a franchise Napa store. Franchise gets bought back out by corporate. Corporate, of course, has everybody take a drug test. My mom has been on medication for back pain for a very long time. Um, of course, this shows up on their tests. She told them in advance, you know, you need to text me about this. I'm, it's going to show up on the test. Text me about it. Call me. Leave a message. As far as we know, they never do. The uh, corporate store ends up letting her go and saying she's non-rehirable. So it, it should have been not an issue, but she was never contacted, at least as far as we know, and they just let her go. And she was the main income. Uh, I was like the secondary income. I've always been contributing, but as much as I can, given how much I'm able to work, which is not a whole lot with with all the conditions that I have. Um, <clears throat> so I, I had to start a GoFundMe. I didn't know what else to do. Uh, my mom's been looking for work all this time. She's not been successful. My brother ha working on and off, but his problems came to a head and he had to leave to go to rehab. Um, so that's where he is. He's in another state in rehab. I'm working and trying to contribute. It's not enough. And we're trying to get help. I'm trying to get on disability. And I, I know I sound, yeah, that's, that's my mom when she worked where she did. And I sound fairly good on stream, but I have a very hard time. I'm on medications that make it even more difficult to concentrate than normal, and I'm having having a very very hard time of it with anxiety attacks. <clears throat> and it, it's 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 hard to talk about it. Yeah. Um, well, hey, brother. I mean, this is. I'm so sorry you've, you've had to deal with so many hard crosses these past few years. That's, uh, I mean, I can't even imagine what you have to deal with with that. That's very, very difficult. Um, and we just want to support you as best we can. Um, right now, you've got $8,500 raised of $20,000. Um, and so if, if anybody out there listening to this, y'all can click on the donate and chip in whatever you can. We can all afford, everybody who's listening to this, especially in the United States, you can afford five, 10, 15, 25, maybe even $50. Um, but uh, Leo, you're our brother in Christ. We want to support you. So, uh, anybody listening to this, watching this, if you can click on the link, just chip in something that you can to help out Leo and his family back on their feet. Uh, yeah, my mom is still looking for work. I am. I'm planning to get into therapy so I can get into a place where I am able to work more. And I appreciate anybody who contributes, anybody who shares. Thank you all so very much. I feel so bad for begging, but I don't know what else to do. And Amen. With, the, the thing about my job is that I have to concentrate, which is why I can only do so much work. 
because it's intellectually intensive and mm -hmm. if i mess up too much i won't get that much work is there uh no is the trailer lot that you have to pay rent to are they helping you out to give you a break or something or what what's the situation with the with the lot you're at with the trailer um I haven't talked to the park managers about any of this. I don't know what they would say, so I haven't gone to them. Um, there are the I I have a case manager for myself from the uh, place where I go to get med medication and counseling, and um, they have a program where they help pay for rent like once, and I'm trying to get that going. I, I'm trying to get disability and um, I'm looking at whatever other programs there are, but there's not a whole lot. I mean, we've had a couple of hurricanes come through and uh, like I said, thank God we our, our house wasn't very, very minimally damaged and um, I know that so many other people were not so not so blessed as to as, as we were. There's a lot of homes lost on the coast and such. Um, I, I'm looking at whatever programs there are, but everything has a long wait list time, and mm -hmm. we we thought we were okay here after losing the house, but things that have ended up falling apart for us and hopefully my mom will get a job and i'll get help and we won't ever have to beg again because like i said i feel so bad for having to beg um, well, hey, hey man it's uh it gives us all an opportunity to, to work together to help you out and i know it's difficult to be in that position um and are you getting any help from your parish like anybody at the parish helping you out does your yes you know people, about the situation people from my parish now my parish is about an hour from me and we have one vehicle and i'm hardly ever able to get up there so i have to go to the local parish um okay. people at my parish i'm in contact with them online they have helped as much as they're able um as i don't know if anyone knows but if you've seen the story going around about the ordinary parish that had been burned down and had had it been attacked again by arson that's my parish oh wow yeah okay. and they're holding a campaign to raise money for the new building so oh, wow. i feel bad even asking them but they have helped somewhat and people from the local parish have helped a little bit too mm -hmm. uh, the local priest is a, a good guy it's you know and um he's spread the campaign somewhat so we've had some help so far and we've been okay for a couple months but with rent and bills and electricity and everything the money only lasts so long and um my mom's still trying to get a job. We're applying yep. basically everywhere. So, yeah, I understand. Well, let's let. Why don't we we say hell Mary right now, mm -hmm. uh, and we ask all the listeners and viewers to please donate, chip in something for Leo and his family. Um, our and guild, our, our I mean, our guild members have chipped in um, uh, as much as we can as well. I, I've been all of our guild members. We've got about five hundred guild members total. And uh, we we've all been chipping in to to try to get the pot fuller for Leo and his family, and we need your help to fill the pot a little bit more. So please donate. Click the link below. Chip in anything you can, and let's ask Saint Anthony of Padua to find all the fun the money that you need. Um, I've always asked Saint Anthony for income in my own life when I've gone through different jobs and whatnot, and he never failed me. So. Let's ask St. Anthony of Padua to find the income. We'll pray Hail Mary, and then we'll ask St. Anthony.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Anthony of Pada, we ask you to find all the income that Leo and his family needs right now so that they can get back on their feet. St. Anthony of Padua, pray for us. Now let's invoke our lay patrons at Meaning of Catholic. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. Pray for us. Mary, Queen of the Home, pray for us. St. Joseph, Terror of Demons, pray for us. St. Anthony of the Desert, pray for all clergy and seminarians. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus is King. Amen. Amen.